Hi there and welcome to the panel shows Hear the Music. I am here with the incredible Vicky Hamilton, affectionately known as the music discovery maven, which <laughs> I love. She is a producer, a screenwriter, a record executive. Vicky has helped to discover and develop some incredible musicians across the years, including Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, Poison, to name just a few. Vicky's here in Australia promoting her incredible new book, Appetite for Dysfunction, and we're so delighted to have a chat with you today, Vicky. Oh, Thank you for joining us. Happy to be us. here. I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your story, how you got into music, how that all came about. Well, I was an art school dropout <clears throat> and uh, started going to see bands and decided that I wanted to manage bands. And uh, Tom Petty told me I look like a California girl, and that was about all it took. <laughs> I started saving money and uh, visited California, and then a year later moved out. And uh, I met Nikki Six from Motley Crue just prior to uh, Too Fast for Love and started working for their then manager, um, Alan Kaufman. And uh, kind of started there, you know. Fell in love with the game and that yeah. was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was over, love at first sight. <laughs> That's brilliant. And um, who has been maybe your favorite group or band that you have signed? Who's your most familiar or that you love and have such a great relationship with? Well, I don't know that I can really pick one favorite sure. because they're all very different. Mm. Um, probably Slash is up there pretty high yeah. on uh, favorite musician guys. You yeah. Know? What is it about Slash that you love? Is it his character? Is it his music combination of both? Um, he's just a really nice guy, a yeah. good business person. Sure. I mean, you know, while Axel was asleep on the couch, me and Slash were doing BAM ads and, uh, you know working out the strategy for what's coming next, you know? Yeah, I imagine that's pretty common too with the um, the creatives, you know, they tend to not be the greatest business people. They're so good at sharing their art, but not necessarily at kind of converting it into something that can then be A rare the few yeah. are good at the business, yeah, you know? I Slash so. is one of them. Mm -hmm. Nikki Six is a good businessman as well. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, Bobby Doll and Poison was a really good business person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that would have made, I imagine that would have made your job much easier to be able to kind of communicate on a level where it's like, we're a team, let's make this happen, you know? Well, I kind of assign one person in the band to sure. like notify the rest of the band members <laughs> of what the deal is and yeah. what's going on yeah. and that they should decide what they want before they bring it to me. Yeah, right. you know I mean? yeah, totally. <laughs> Otherwise you're just chasing your tail all day long. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah. And um, I guess in terms of music for yourself, have you ever thought about, did you ever think about being a musician yourself or was it something that you just sort um, of admired completely in other people? When I when I was 15, I auditioned for a band and I sang um, Alice Cooper under my wheels. I went a little flat and that was kind of the end oh. of it. Afraid. Short-lived, short-lived, <laughs> yeah. short-lived dream. I looked great, but wasn't cutting it. <laughs> well, I guess it's important to be objective about your own yeah, creativity, yeah. you know. Now, I've always been a behind-the-scenes person, mm -hmm. you know. What is it about the behind-the-scenes that you love? Is it kind of, you know, seeing the real world behind? Because I guess, you know, we, we were talking earlier about um, social media and things like that and how there's a kind of front that we create. And I think it's the same with musicians and creatives. There is a, a persona uh, that, that goes out into the world, but then behind the scenes, it can be quite a different story. Right. You know, and yeah. I think I, I'm, your book, Appetite for Dysfunction, kind of covers a little bit of that because it is that sort of psychology of it's it's a world which is sort of set up for dysfunction in a way isn't it because it's like you, you're one person but then you're another person and then you throw in kind of drugs and alcohol and it's like wow how do we kind of well rock and roll doesn't really lend itself to be clean cut does sure. it yeah exactly <laughs> you know? I mean, more these days, though, I mm. find that the younger bands are like, you know, vegetarians and don't smoke or drink or oh, any of wow. that stuff. But, um, you know, I like being right and I like being first. So, you know, that's why I, I chose <laughs> I to be a personal manager, mm. you know, mm. and I like working with baby bands. It's, you know, not going to make me the most money, but, um, you know, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. I like watching them 
fulfill their destiny. That's amazing. But I also worked with June Carter Cash and um, wow. made a uh, Grammy-winning record with her. Amazing. You know, her and Johnny Cash were already very established when I worked with them, so that was like a very special time in my life That's as well. That's incredible, yeah. yeah. And um, tell us about the book, because this is why you're here in Australia, is to... Yep promote your book and also I have a record company I just course. started a record company but um yeah um well the book took me seven years to write not every day of course but um you know I decided that it was a good time to write it because I'm getting a little older now and I was starting to forget things and uh, <laughs> wanted to get all the stories down Absolutely. you know what I mean yeah so um that's why I did it and uh it's been pretty well received, you know. There's some film and TV uh, interest in it as well now. Fantastic. So, yeah. So, so you good, think yeah. we could make a little bio epic about you and your life? Well, let's hope so. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Well, I'm actually a film producer as well. Are so, you? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is a match made in heaven. I mean, you never know. The rights. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> happening. Uh, can you share a couple of the stories from the book? I know it's such a cliche question, but... Well, who would you like to hear a story oh. about? Can, can we have one about the Guns N' Roses? I know it's very cliche, but... Okay, sure. Um, so I had borrowed an investor's car to drive them to rehearsal once, and, um, <laughs> you know, he had some of his kids' toys in the back of the car, and I, like, scolded them and said, don't you mess with his toys, you know, because, you know, he's nice enough to lend us the station it's wagon, true. and let's just be cool about it. So I'm like driving and I see, I look in the rear view mirror and I see them like smirking, you know, and I'm like, what's going on? And Axel's sitting in the front seat with me and he's like grinning ear to ear. All of a sudden I smell something burning. I'm like, what is that? And I look in the back and they've like taken the Ernie and Bert dolls and tied guitar strings <laughs> around their necks and like had them smoking cigarettes out the window, you know? <laughs> This is all the stuff that happened before Instagram stories. Too. Yeah, so yeah. It's like that would have definitely made it into like an Instagram. Or oh, Facebook yeah, totally. Post. They would have been filming it as it was happening, you know. <laughs> How many times did you find yourself sort of yelling at like your, your bands or your band members? And did you feel like kind of like a maternal kind of in um yeah you know I've always been sort of the mommy yeah you know yeah, yeah. and uh always scolding and you know whatever <laughs> sometimes they listen sometimes they don't you know? yeah of course well you've got a very you know loving vibe about you so I can imagine it'd be like we don't really want to upset mum you know she's kind of going to direct our careers so we want to you know, make sure we do the right no, thing. No, I don't know that. <laughs> they, they were like tricksters, you know. They were like, okay, how can we get her now? It's like... <gasps> I love that. Sla sl you know, slash... I, like, saw from the photo shoot that he had on one of my T-shirts, and, you know, I went into my T-shirt drawer, and I was like, you know, half my shirts are gone, you know. <laughs> it's like... And, you know, a couple years ago, he said to me, yeah, I think I still have your Jimmy and the Mustangs T-shirt, you know. <laughs> I was like, okay, you can keep it. Thanks. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And what are you passionate about outside? I mean, obviously you do so many things. You're a, you're a screenwriter as well, as I've seen. You're, you're a journalist. Yeah. What? I'm mostly a manager, though. Manager. That's I, your yeah, number one. Yeah. yeah. And I do a lot of managing consulting as sure. well. Um, and now I have this little record company called Dark Spark yeah, Music. Yeah, tell and us about it's Dark through, Spark Music, um, of course. It's through um, The Orchard, which is owned by Sony. And I've just released my first single with a guy named Damien Sage. And it's doing pretty well. And uh, So how did you find Damien? How did you come across him? Well, <laughs> that, that's a good question. Um, he was playing with a guitar player that used to play in a Guns N' Roses cover band. <laughs> And I ran into this guy in Gelson's Market, and he said to me, you know, I'm playing with this really good singer. You've got to, like, check him out. Wow. So it came, came through Gelson's Market, <laughs> through a Guns N' Roses cover band. <laughs> put that up in the banner. <laughs> yeah. And I've got a little band called Lovely World from South Carolina that I'm just getting ready to make a record with, and Rick Parker's producing, and I'm very excited about them as well. What is it that you... I'm curious as to what... I mean, obviously, when you when you become an expert at something, because you have, you know, it's that 
10,000 hours or whatever you say that it takes to become a genius or become an expert in your field. It's what you do is, is essentially you have an eye, right, or an ear as well, a combination of both. Are you able to identify or articulate what those specific things are that you look for? Or is it a feeling? Is it just an, uh, is it an instinct? What is it that, that gets you to go, yeah, there's something there? I don't really know how to describe it, but I know it when I see I it. See, that's the thing, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. such a hard it's, to... It's really like a hair, arm hair raising experience, you know, that you just intuitively know yeah. that it's, it's on, you know? It's that intuition, isn't yeah. it? You can't mm -hmm. really, you just can't describe that. You could kind of try and create some blueprint of success. but Well, with just... bands too, it all starts with the song, you know? Right. You gotta have like great songs. Yeah, sure. You know? And what makes a great song for you, in your opinion? It moves me, you mm. know, it either makes me want to like kill myself or cry yeah, yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, my heart like, burst open with love or yeah, whatever amazing. it is you know it just got to move you in some way yeah be know? affected isn't it because yeah we can sort of numb out a bit in life can't we and it's there's a lot of music out there that's just like yeah okay good but you know yeah, totally. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I, like i don't want to do that 100 you know? yeah definitely it's it's yeah it's that deep resonance that you kind of that makes you feel like oh that's why I'm alive you know that's that, that's what we live for is yeah. that entertainment and that that juice what are you passionate about outside of music is there anything else in your life that lights you up the way that music does um yes I love to write myself mm -hmm. you know and um that's how I ended up writing this book and I'm about to write another book as ah, well yeah fantastic are we allowed to hear what this new book is going to it's going to be a how to become a rock star book that's going to be illustrated. I'm going to like dumb it down for yes, everybody. I love it. <laughs> yeah. We could totally make this like rock star for dummies, like how to be a rock star for dummies. And then I mean, could... it'll be factual, but it's going to be funny I as love well. It. You know? It's terrific. It's funny because we're literally just saying there's no real blueprint for it. And you're like, well, actually, I'm going to write a, a rock star, how to become a rock star for dummies. And then we can just take it to like actors. You know, singers, sure, why not? Like whoever, whatever you're trying to do, Vicky's book, it's going to help you. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And look out for this incredible book, guys, Appetite for Dysfunction. And of course, and you Dark... can get it on my website, VickyHamilton.com. VickyHamilton.com and Dark Spark Music as well. We can't wait to hear what you guys bring to the front of our industry here in Australia and across the world. Thanks so much for joining us.